and welcome back to Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling, as you can see what's going on on a lovely island of Fawn Hollow today, where we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll see. But um, I recorded a bit of chicory, um, colourful tale, uh, earlier today. It's probably the second last episode. I, I think next episode might be the last. Or if it's not going to be the last, I'll make it the I'll make it the last. <laughs> Didn't mean for that to sound so threatening, but I mean, like, um, I'll just keep recording until it's done because I'm not doing anything. Uh, uh, I, I was just like finishing up collecting all the pieces of litter in Jiggery and now I am collecting all the, uh, the the clothing items. So there really isn't all that much left actually in the Jiggery oeuvre left to go. So, you know, there's your update, I suppose. Hello everyone, right now in Fawn Hall, it's 3.46pm on Wednesday, June 8th, 2022. Um, so it's a sort of thing that if you're watching that series, I mean, I, th I don't know quite where it's at. I, I think Jiggery's almost at its final boss episode, either, either it's, um, what day is today? Wednesday, so either tomorrow or um, or it's already been uploaded. I can't, oh, been published. Sorry, I don't remember. So you're not really going to see the end of it until like the start of July or something, which is, you know, fire, fireflies pop in like the fourth of July or something. Whatever, whatever that sort of like country mashup is from ages ago. Um, but yeah, but I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm just like picking up litter and that sort of thing. You know, <laughs> but there's a very interesting moment, I suppose, uh, twice in uh, those final sort of episodes where I just basically go on a huge, not a huge run. It's basically because I was just. And if you don't know in chicory, litter is a currency, so I guess mild spoilers about chicory. Um, oh yeah, and I should probably talk about chicory at some time, but I haven't actually finished the game yet, so I guess it's not yet. Um, uh, mild spoilers for a chicory a colourful tale is um, the currency in the game is litter, and that's used as um, the currency to, to actually buy things like furniture items and st stuff from people. So uh, there's one part where basically after collecting all the litter I just had to buy the huge amounts of um, items which I've not bought yet from the people in the store. Um, so, to, oh, hello, you two just talking. Oh, are you talking? You're not talking. I thought you two were talking. Uh, to fill out that gap, I just ended up just going like on this huge like speech about, I don't even remember what in particular, I can't remember what the first one was about, I'm gonna be honest, but uh, I guess you'll discover that for yourself when that episode gets uploaded. But the second one was about litter picking, and I, I actually ended up talking about um, a little bit of um, an anecdote which I'm, I'm not sure if I've spoken about in the Animal Crossing episodes themselves. I was like, this, well, after I did it, you know, after I recorded the episode and all that, I was like, that felt like something which probably should have gone in an Animal Crossing episode. So, you know, I'm going to do it in an Animal Crossing episode anyway. Because I, I don't, I honestly am surprised about, there's not actually all that much overlap between the different series I play <laughs> um, and the audiences. Or there is, I'm not aware of it. I'm only aware of who you are if you actually leave a comment, so, you know, fair enough. Shout out, well, um, I'd say shout out to you if you leave a comment, but I suppose you already get replies from me a lot of times, so <laughs> I guess that kind of is a shout out. I'm not really sure. Um, <laughs> I forgot where I was going with this. It wasn't meant to get into this sort of weird meta commentary where I, I don't really know what my point was in the first place, but yeah, it's about letter picking, and it was a thing that happened in uh, secondary school that, like, um, once every couple of months or so, what, what, one of the classes would be, like, the class who was chosen to do letter picking for that. Um, I, I think it was, like, once every, like, each week, it was a different year group which had, um, not the opportunity, I mean, technically the opportunity, but that's not really a word I want to use, uh, the um, responsibility of being on litter duty for that, uh, for that week, and then, like, each, um, each form would have a different date or something. It doesn't quite add up because we had six forms and um, <laughs> five, five days a week. So maybe it, it was probably somewhat like that distributed. I, I, I can't remember exactly. It might have been done via forms or houses, I suppose. Um, and then each year had a different different day or something. Either way, it was, it was basically every few months, uh, your class would be chosen that instead of morning registration, which is normally like 15 minutes or so before lessons actually start to allow sort of um, people to come in and actually um, I forgot what I was going to say, to join, to come in and join in with the morning, I'm just getting so many flashbacks from school now, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest, because um, normally morning registrations to sort of allow all, all the students to filter in, you know, and sometimes the buses or trains get delayed that little bit, so, you know, it takes a little bit of time for them, people to get in, etc, etc. It's just a morning, you know, give it time to, for the kids to come to school, you know, put their stuff away, do stuff that they had to do in the morning, and then, you know, um, attend like morning assemblies or something in the morning etc but that's all that time's for uh, but that time would be um, taken for litter picking where you basically go to one part of the school and basically just pick up litter for that entire morning certainly have a time you know we're all teenagers at that time you know and uh, well you know I, I certainly did the duty you know I spent the entire time picking up litter that sort of thing I'm sure like if you're given an, the opportunity if, if you gave me the opportunity to optionally do it I wonder if I would have said yes or no <laughs> I'm not really sure what I'd said I probably would have said yes just for like um if you asked me directly, I wouldn't have done it. But if it was the sort of thing I was like, oh, sign up now to Letter Picking Society, would I sign up for it? Probably not, but I also didn't sign up for all that many societies, I think, back in school time. Um, 
But certainly nowadays, probably, probably I would do it. And you know, maybe that's something I should do. I should see if there's like local litter picking opportunities or something in my in my area. But certainly, you know, contribute nicely. Although to be honest, it's not actually that. Apparently, the place I live in, obviously, I'm not going to give much away, but it's um, it's it's not that bad litter wise. I feel like it it does a pretty decent job. Like whoever's you know maybe because they have litter drives or something in that space. But yeah, um, so we basically spend the morning. You know, everyone gets a sort of plastic glove, and you know, some people get like plastic bags or whatever. You might be like, isn't that sort of like contributing, you know, to a problem of litter by using non-biodegradable stuff in first place? And I'm like, yeah, I guess so. But they probably, you know, our school didn't really have a budget to give every single, um, every single person in class one of those like litter picking arms or whatever. And, you know, it's, it's probably not advisable to just be to your students, hey, you know, just go pick up tra uh, trash with your, you know, <laughs> I was going to say raw hands. That's a horrible phrase. With your... Uh, naked hand or whatever you know you don't know how long that stuff's been out there so you kind of need something i guess i guess the, the the best opportunity would be to use like these sort of silicon gloves and sort of like wash them i suppose between each use and then pass them down to each class but I'd, i'm not sure you would particularly think that many of them <laughs> and i don't know i think it's a lot of faith you're putting in into those school students there to not just like you know lose the gloves or whatever or just like chuck them on you know not horribly um destroy them whatever so i guess these plastic bags and um, plastic gloves are just kind of like um a lesser of two evils in, in a certain sense. But anyway, that's not what I'm really here to talk about. And certainly at the time of, you know, certain members of our class, and I'm not going to name any names because, you know, what's the point of calling them out? They're, they're teenagers, of course. Yeah, you know, of course teenagers are not going to be most involved. I'm um, not invested in something. You know, in the, the class that you've got people who, you know, the, the people who take the academic or... or the school stuff very seriously and people who really don't you know it, I'm, I'm not here to say you know who you are who judge you as a person and that sort of thing but you know some people you know didn't pick up litter some people did you know whatever but i think on the whole most people did pick up a little bit of litter um especially when it got to later years when you know people were sort of like um, a, bit, a bit more like environmentally conscious i think of that sort of thing um certainly at the time i was just like you know it's, it's not particularly the most interesting thing in the world um <laughs> and I'm sure at the time I was a lot more cynical to the actual viewpoint of a school making us do this, being like, oh, what's up, kind of a point, you know? I mean, not not to be crude, but I suppose we we did have janitors or something who did it in the first place. But, you know, looking back, that's a bit of an entitled viewpoint, isn't it, you know? Why, why not make your job easier for janitors out of something which probably takes only a few minutes, like, like you did it like once every two months or something who cares is basically what i <laughs> i say to my teenage self who to be honest i'm just kind of putting words in her mouth she probably didn't actually think that way in the first place but still it's just a simple task you know you take out 15 minutes of your day every like two months or something just to pick up like five pieces of litter because you know there's 30 of you in a class or 30 of you in each of our classes if you each pick, pick up like three pieces of litter three pieces of litter that's like 100 pieces of litter not not quite 100 okay it's technically 90 but you know rounding up to 100 that's about 100 pieces of litter already picked up from one area that's a huge amount of litter but yeah anyway the thing i was talking about in chicory was like i'm surprised you know how much litter this sort of ends up being around the place because you know me and my friends i don't think any of us would be the type of people to sort of like litter in the first place which is why you know it's I, I know that's sort of just like a duh sort of thing but i don't think any of my friends would be the type of people just you know just to leave litter on the ground or whatever for no apparent reason and like all the people i know are friends of family and you know I, I guess i haven't asked them personally so maybe i'd be surprised about some of their responses or whatnot but if, if they had a piece of litter they're not going to just sort of like chuck it on the ground or anything we're gonna you know put it in their bag or whatever or just walk over at least you know like five paces to the nearest bin and actually you know chuck uh, chuck a piece of litter in the bin I feel like it's a very sort of normal response. And then, you know, the thing I went on to say is like, I probably shouldn't be attributing to malice what could be attributed to ignorance in a lot of cases with um, with how litter sort of gets left about, you know? Sometimes, I'm sure it happens accidentally all the time, you know? You, you know, buy a drink from a vending machine or something, you, you drink from it, most most of it's gone, whatever, you pull it down, um, and you do something, maybe like the wind knocks it over, and you, and since it's like sort of outside, out of mind, you kind of like forget about your drink, because you, in your mind, you already like finished it, and it's not until like you've already left the area, you're like, oh, what happened to my drink? And you're like, oh, I must have misplaced it or something. And then, you know, that sort of just gets like littered on the ground, because, you know, it, it's get tossed, tossed on the ground, not every person, well, that's from Axel Axel, actually. Not every person, when they see like a piece of the tumble ground, they're going to go and like actually pick it up and walk to a bin, especially if there's no bins nearby or whatever. You know, that was something that accidentally can happen. Um, especially in London, here in England, it's very common to have these sort of like uh, plastic hanging hanging bins, which are basically just like basketball hoop rings with, um, instead of a net, it's just a plastic bag hanging down. Um, 
Um, those are very common bins where you sort of like sway around a lot of the wind and you know it does get kind of windy in, in cities especially due to like the funneling effect that happens with like really tall skyscrapers and buildings uh, it's quite common you know perhaps a strong gust of wind comes up blows some trash outside or bin in first place and gets scattered that way and again people are not exactly can or too keen on touching random litter which they don't exactly know of a bin and you know picking up and putting it in the bin and I myself sometimes I do that you know certainly if it's close to a bin if, it, if the bin's in sight I'll you know pick it up and put it in the bin um, I do have sort of like a germophobic tendency so you know I will put on a glove for that sort of thing <laughs> in first place you might say that's a bit of over exaggeration but you know I, I like my cleanliness it's probably how I'd put that how I describe that um if anything maybe I should carry around one of those sort of like litter picky things <laughs> around place and sort of just pop, pop them in but I, I'm sure a lot of it happens just due to negligence as well and I, I feel like it's over the top to attribute everything to malice it's not like people are like buying something but like oh what do I do with this crisp packet now I don't know chuck it on the park floor or not on the grass it, it probably isn't something like that you know maybe they're having a picnic or whatever and they're just sort of being like oh you know and it just like blows away in the wind and they're like oh no it's far too much effort to catch that as it sort of sails away in the wind and it just sort of lands down in, in the park like um, 200 metres away that they don't see you know I'm not going to say like fair enough but I can see I, I, I can forgive it I suppose you know Littering is, you know, not, as much as I love the environment of that sort of thing, I'm not going to be cynical being like, oh, you know, you litter death penalty or something like that. that that's clearly over the top. You know, I can forgive human errors. <laughs> Certainly, I, I think it's a lot less forgivable to just be the sort of person to be like, what do I do with this? Chuck it on the floor. You know, that I sort of sort of like narrow my eyes and I'm just like, just carry a bag with you. you know, put it in your bag. Can't carry a bag. What, you can't carry like a, a, a bottle for like 30 paces until the next bin? <laughs> Isn't that that interesting thing about Disneyland is because obviously human laziness knows it's bound to, uh, there are a lot of people who will just be like, oh, you know, I've got a piece of trash, what I'm going to do with it? I'll just put it down, you know, someone else, that's someone else's problem. It's probably one of the biggest reasons that, you know, litter actually becomes a, a thing in the first place. It's not because people are just like, I'm going to purposely let it. It's going to be like, I'm just going to put this here and probably someone else will, you know, one of the cleaners will come around and like pick it up and pop it in the bin, which they probably will. But, you know, it's not like the cleaners can, the janitors are always theirs. Um, not like we're going to see every single thing. Unless you're in Disneyland, where Disneyland will probably hire like huge amounts of janitors in the first place. But also, and isn't it the thing that what Disney did, that um, he basically timed how long it took him, how many paces it took him to eat a banana no, no, to peel and eat a banana and then however many paces that is that was like the sort of baseline he was like well, there must be a bin every like say it took him like 20 paces or something he's like there must be a bin every single 20 steps and that makes sense you know the bins are changed very regularly and to be fair in Disneyland and I can't Disneyland's often quite clean at least the one in Japan I've, I've been to but also Japan's quite clean so maybe you know that's why if anything we should you know I'd... <laughs> again I'm not, I'm not here to sort of like glorify all aspects of Japanese culture because a lot of it, Japanese culture some of it's good, some of it's bad, and a lot of it is just subjected to what you want. But I will say the sort of standards to cleanliness is by far and away the best part in Japan. Japan is so clean. <laughs> it's unbelievably clean. And someone, as someone like me who likes clean things, I'm like, yes, this is, this is, is this heaven? Or is this just a, <laughs> I don't know, East Asian country? <laughs> I don't really know what I was going with. This sort of very strange parody of Bernard's Burnham, um, song from inside. Um, but if you haven't been to Japan, which, you know, fair enough, uh, for one, you, you're probably not Japanese if you're watching this English video, is my guess. But also, too, um, quite an expensive holiday to actually go to a lot of places. Hello. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. And Japan is unbelievably clean. Because um, there's also, you might, you might be surprised, because it's very uncommon to actually see bins outside in Japan. It's not, like, huge uncommon. You, you see them often outside, like, um, what are they called? Like, 7-Eleven. So it's sort of like um small small um convenience stores that's what we're called um it's quite common but apparently they didn't they used to be even less common i suppose um outside of convenience stores but nowadays they're a lot more common so you can you know you like buy a piece of food and you stand outside of a convenience store eat it and actually chuck it in a bin rather than you know having to carry it yourself but that's kind of like how it goes in japan is um all the litter is sort of like your responsibility so if you get some litter you're meant to carry it yourself um put it in your bag and you don't chuck it away until you get home or that sort of thing and of it, honestly, I think we can all take a page out of that sort of book, you know. Uh, not necessarily the sense that there shouldn't be bins everywhere. I feel like bins... Well, I don't know, because I, obviously I don't study, like, city planning or anything like this. It might be one of those sort of, like, a backwards... Um, what's, like, um, those, <laughs> what's that effect called? It's called, like, the cobra effect or something, you know, like, named after that thing in Hindi where it's like, oh, we'll hunt snakes and get money or whatever, then people just started breeding snakes rather than actually hunting the snakes, because that was a good way to get money. And then it was just like, oh, they stopped that system, and now, like, everyone who bred with snakes has just released it into the wild, resulting in more of a snake pest problem than they had before, but... 
I don't know if having like um, public bins or something has some sort of reverse effect where actually it turns out doing that encourages more people to letter rather than to actually put away their letter. I don't really know. Sorry, Lily, didn't see either. Um, it, it might have one of those sort of like counterintuitive effects along with like widening roads up to a certain extent, I suppose, but you never have a sort of like um, an appeal to the absurd rather than um, an argument on good grounds, I'd like to think. But sorry, I'm having that argument, you don't even hear half the argument in the first place. <laughs> or discussion, a, a debate, shall we say. I don't know if it's got one of those sort of backwards um, cause and effects, but it'd be nice, you know, if we at least, you know, took to heart the, the part about, you know, the litter that you create is your responsibility, you know. Self-responsibility is a, it's a good thing certainly to teach and instill upon people. Whilst we, whilst we can have cleaner streets, I like to think. But I'm sure a lot of it is just to sort of like negligence in the first place. You, you can certainly see, you know, <laughs> you, you walk through certain areas, shall we say, you know, you know the ones if you live in a big city. Um, and you just see on the ground things like, things leading to perhaps illicit substances, illicit substances of certain kind, you know beer bottles or perhaps worse depending on where you live um and you already know the whole story people were you know partaking of these substances you know got obviously not lost their mind but like obviously they um it inhibits their regular sensible functionings that was such a weird way to describe this <laughs> trying to sort of dance around topics again i still don't really know the age demographic of a people uh, Demographic, demographic of the people who actually watch these videos, and and of course, does tend to skew a bit young. Um, and people who just sort of like negligently um, leave like military because it, you know if they're not exactly in the in the right piece of mind, and yeah, I'll, I'll give them a the benefit of doubt, and you know if they weren't un, under the effects of certain substances, but perhaps um they, they wouldn't you know be, be um, leave stuff like on the ground or whatever you know. Certainly, if, if you drink a little bit too much, get a little bit too tipsy, I can certainly see you accidentally like forgetting a beer can, forgetting a beer bottle or whatever, doing something stupid, you know, in the heat moment. Because, you know, alcohol is certainly um, a logical thought process inhibitor, <laughs> shall we say. But even still, I feel like even when I've had a lot to drink, well, I don't know, I don't, I guess I don't really go out to, to public to drink much in the first place. But even if I do, is that I'm, I'm not inclined to litter. But I'm also like, you know... <laughs> Yeah, let, let, let's not go into, you know, drinking alcohol, but it, it's not particularly, even <laughs> well, um, it's not really the age demographic word and, or topics we're, we're looking for Animal Crossing. We'll, we'll save that for when we do Chicken Police number two, if that ever comes out. I don't even know if that's coming out, <laughs> I'll be put honest, but still. Um, oh, we're in sleeping, so let's not disturb you. Disturb you, uh, I forgot what else I was going to say. Yeah, I don't know. I, I certainly think uh, um, one of the problems that comes with um, li a litter problem, at least certainly in very like busy like areas like central London, is the fact that uh, the bins get overflown quite quickly. It's like all the times I've been to London, like and you know I've, I've gone to toss something away. Have we got a recipe from a villager? I'm not sure if we have. So we should probably look around and see who our crafting villager is. We know it's not Rowan, and we know it's not Raymond, we know it's not Vivian, so it's probably Amelia, which is why we haven't found it yet. It's because we haven't been up to that corner of the island. Um, what like, well, missions do we got? So what else do you got? Um, nothing particularly interesting. So that was also horribly off key. <laughs> um, I've got a thing. Oh yeah, all, all the bins are always like so like overfilled. It, it's quite difficult to get any litter in. You know, you have a some like cheeky McDonald's or whatever at like nine p.m. or whatever, and you go to like to toss it up away in the bin. The bin's completely overflowing. Fair enough. You know, don't expect the workers to constantly be changing them out in. Or you know they're overworked as it as it is already, but certainly that that probably does increase the chance I think of um, litter ending up being sort of like discarded or strewn about because people sort of just like lazily don't do anything with it in the first place. Like one of the recent times we came to McDonald's, it, <laughs> what happened was basically there's not much cheating in this, in this McDonald's, and then um, what people were doing is because the bins were overfilled, they were just putting the litter on the tables next to the bins, which is fair enough. Like if you don't have any place to put it, it's be better than just like tossing it on the street. At least like put them in a, oh, it's not a media, so I guess it's Apollo. Um, put them in a like an easy accessible location, hopefully for the cleaners to actually come around. 
in the first place that people were just like neatly piling or sort of neatly quote quote putting their litter exactly in um next to a bin and you know that's kind of what we had to do as well because there was no space in the bins the bins were literally full up like the, the, the flaps were pushed in the top of the bins completely filled up as well <laughs> and the inside like completely done so it was just like well either we put them on the floor next to <laughs> the bin or we put them on the table next to the bin i guess putting them on the table next to the bin makes the most sense <laughs> I guess it's just kind of expected, and to be fair, it was quite um, quite late at night um, for that McDonald's, so we were probably thinking, well, it was probably like they're closing up now, you know, but it just became, um, you know, business slows down, I suppose, at that point. They, they probably just got done, um, just done with um, dealing with, like, a, a late night clubbers sort of rush, etc, etc. And that's fair enough, you know. Who am I to criticise? Who am I to disagree? Because that's, you know... A job with um, not much recognition, certainly. In first place. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> litter picking. I don't really know what else to say to us. And I'm trying to think if. Did I do litter picking in primary school? I feel like we must have at some point, but I really don't remember. I guess it's a bit young to be doing it in primary It's not like it's a bit young, but a bit young to be expecting um, like a, a group of like 30 or so eight-year-olds to be all that organised and picking with her but you know I, I've supervised by teachers I think it could certainly instill some good um, properties in my way good characteristics in children and whatnot anyway um yeah so I mean if I see a litter and I I know where a bin is or if I, I see a bin not too far away I'll probably pick it up and I'll probably t toss it in the trash <laughs> the exception if, if it feels like it's incredibly dirty I'm, I'm not going to pick up like things which are obviously clearly dirty or whatever and I suppose that you know well, well, I like to say I'm, I'm a good person and pick up all, any trash I see. And I know I certainly don't. You know, when, when I go to central, cent, central London and things, you know, certainly set off my sort of um, um, germ-phobic tendencies. I'm sort of just like, uh, you know, I don't... I'd rather not, like, touch anything that's just, like, casually been on the ground or what what have you. It's not really in my purview right now. It's not, not really what I was hoping to do but if it's like you know um in my local area you know it's walking down the street and you know i'm like at the train station or something you know i see something right next to the bin i'll, I'll pick it up and like toss it in the, the bin and perhaps that's a bit judgmental me being like oh you know my local train station is a lot better than the center of center of london which is you know i don't know <laughs> i guess it is kind of judgmental but <laughs> it's a it's sort of thing you know it, i suppose it depends how i'm feeling at the time with regards to um wants to touch things on the ground <laughs> And honestly, you might be listening to me being like, what, are you like crazy or something? And honestly, I think maybe I am in a certain sense. I, I, I don't like touching dirty things. <laughs> Carry hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer my hands. Like, I'll do it if I know I could wash my hands soon after, basically. And you might be like, you know, I don't want to say this or like light, ter light terms or something. It's like, that feels like mar mildly OCD or whatever. Um, maybe, I don't know. It, it's something... Something of you, you know, I, I don't really know if I have anything. I've never been to a therapist about that sort of thing, but it also doesn't adversely affect my life. I just think I'm, uh, I have more emphasis on cleanliness. Or, you know, more emphasis of, you know, avoiding germs, I suppose, compared to the average person. Perhaps to, like, um, um, what's a word? <laughs> but perhaps o overzealously so, which is fair enough, you know. Like, it was a thing I talked about before, you know, about what, about washing fruits episode, which is, I still can't really believe I, I did a whole episode about just washing fruits. Um, about the, the fact that, um, I'm apparently the only one in my, like, friend group who really wa washes <laughs> the fruits before, um, before I eat it. And, you know, I, I don't really know what I'm doing Nook Bar mission wise. I don't, I don't even know if I have any more Nook Bar missions to be particularly doing. Um, I cannot really. I suppose we'll go deep sea diving because we haven't really done that for a while. And then we'll go sell all this stuff. But um, apparently I'm like the other one of my group of friends who washes their fruits. Um, before I eat them. And if you don't, that's that's fair enough. You know, that sort of thing. I don't do it because I'm in the sense that um, I feel like I'm going to die if I do it or anything like that. But I don't know. Just, a, a washed fruit just tastes nicer, I think, to me. You know, like washed grape, washed strawberry, whatever. Just, it just tastes a little bit nicer than one I've, I've eaten directly from a packet, but, you know, your, your mileage may vary. I'm not here to judge your own decisions, etc, etc. I mean, certainly there, there's something to be said about the um, littering and the fact that so many other things we have has have so much plastic waste in the first place, which probably, you know, contributes a lot to it. And a lot to the, to the reasoning of why um, litter ends up being so prevalent. prevalent. 
you know, it's not like you nap napkins tend to biodegrade quite quickly on you know, any sort of paper um, material. Excuse me, but you know, plastic cutlery and you know that sort of things you see a lot of the time, not so much. It's also quite a common thing I feel like to see like confetti in parks or whatever. Like people have like a, you know, people have a party in the park. Fair enough, a good old time. Have some confetti? Why not? Not clean after yourself? Mm -mm. Tusk, tusk, tusk is what I'd say to that. For one, might you might be like, oh, but so much effort to clean out confetti in the park. In which case, I suppose my response to that would be, don't have confetti in an, a public area if you're not willing to clean it up afterwards. I suppose. <laughs> it's it's again, it's going back to sort of like um, the idea of. Um, taking responsibility, I suppose. Not, not responsibility, accountability, perhaps. Might be a better word. But yeah, again, I am also arguing against a straw man in my head. I'm sure most, you know, like, you, I only notice the times when there is confetti in the park. I don't notice the times when there isn't confetti in the park because there's no confetti to notice. You know, times where I'm sure very sensible people were like, oh, I'll have confetti in the park, or, and then we'll just clean it up afterwards. Or they'll be like, we'll have confetti in the park, which, you know, degrades in the rain, or degrades in water or something. So then, like, when it rains, it washes it all. The, Washes it all away. I don't know if that exists, by the way. I'm just sort of just making this up, to be perfectly honest. And, you know, I try not to be a cynical person and pay attention only to the, the worst aspects and facets of life. Ha, ha, give a bit of a shout out to the people who do well and that sort of thing. So, if you, if you know, you participate in letter picking, even if you do something as small as, you know, pick up a bottle next to a bin and chuck it in a bin, even if you do something as small as take accountability for your own trash and um, toss it in the bin rather than just, you know, mindlessly. Or forgetting about it and tossing it in the ground. I should check if we actually have Kitki Mambo as a song, I don't know. And then, you know, shout out to you. But this episode is dedicated to you. Does that really mean much? Not really, I'm going to be perfectly honest. But I mean, I have Animal Crossing episodes dedicated, dedicated to whatnot, including people who wash fruits, I suppose. So, you know. <laughs> At this point, I'm going to cover everyone on Earth eventually. Well, maybe not, but. Cover, cover large subsets of people on the Earth. So yeah, um, I don't know, lizard picking. Haven't done that for a while. Maybe I should get into it. Um, but for now, if you haven't been watching, thank you very much. It's been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Dear Darling. Any likes, comments, subscriptions, shares, I greatly appreciate it. Join me, Dear Darling, Discord, follow me on Twitter down below. Hope we see each other again. But for now, it's our farewell. So until next time, bye-bye for now.